Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see y'all. Um, is anybody tired? I'm a little tired. I think I got almost four hours of sleep, but I'm here. I'm excited. Uh, I'm really. This is a, a topic I really care about, and I get excited talking about. So I'm glad that you guys showed up, and um, we'll get to work on something together here. Uh, the title is "You." Yes, you need to sketch. And that kind of comes around from all the interactions I've had with people over the years that are not designers and that are designers and just realizing there's a need to communicate things visually. So we're going to do a little bit of that today. Uh, my name is Joshua Wold. I work at a company called XWP. We do a lot of uh, development work uh, for different companies and different clients. And my role in the company has been to try to communicate confusing things in a simple way. Um, whether it's working with our developers and architects um, as a designer or a product owner to interact with the client and just make a lot of things that could be confusing more simple. Um, I live in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I just like to show pictures because I think it's awesome there. Um, uh, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful places on earth. There's my little family. This is old. She's now over a year, and she has opinions about life, but uh, I just left it up there. Uh, there's the lake town I live in. And I want to figure out a little bit about you guys. Um, raise your hand if you are, I'll start off with a, uh, if you have the label of designer of some sort. Perfect. Developer. Perfect. How about equivalent of a project manager? And then small business owner? And anyone working in a web development type company? And then raise your hand if I didn't get you at all. OK, awesome. That kind of gives me a sense of where we stand on things. Um, we're going to do three things today. I've, uh, I'd like to give a little bit of a talk ahead of time to give the context for what I'm talking about, why sketching matters. Then I'll do a sketch live to kind of show what I'm intending. And then we'll do some sketches together. Um, I've got three examples today we can do. But if we start getting a little tired or bored, we're just going to quit it too. So we'll kind of just see how it's going. If the exercises are going well, we'll do more. All right, so um, this workshop is for someone who is a, a, a two broad categories, designers and non-designers. I want people to be encouraged to communicate in a visual way. Um, so I work with developers um, all day long, and they are sharing with me really good ideas that need to be written into user stories or acceptance criteria, et cetera, and that the client needs to understand. So I'll often write up a quick sketch to say, hey, um, developer of mine, friend of mine, is this what you were thinking? And he'll go, no, that's not what I meant at all. And that tells me in the two minutes I spent on my sketch that I misunderstood and I need to fix something. I'll go, oh, yeah, you're right. That's good. Um, so I'll, I have my definition of what sketching is because I just want to set a baseline. It's Sketching is drawing wiggly lines, wobbly circles, arrows and squiggles and squares on paper with pen. That's my definition, and it's not supposed to be art. Uh, although I am a designer, that's not the point of this workshop. Um, so I've got a couple of things that I've been able to do. Uh, to, to, uh, I like to share stories. Um, that's me in Idaho. And I was working remotely last year with a client in that part of Australia. I don't know where that is and then another coworker in that part of Australia. And as we're working on a project, we had, by the way, my voice just cracked, I got sick on the way here, and the worst sinus pressure was landing on the last plane coming down. So forgive me, I lost my voice, it's, it's recovering. Um, I had a, a website I was working on with uh, our team and with the client, and we wanted to have a portal on the website. You can see up there, a pretty portal. And when you click on the portal, you go to log in to the back end. When you go log in, you get to see a bunch of tools in the portal and get to use them for this, if you're a customer of this website. But one of the most important tools is this analytic tool. If you click on that, you go to another login. And then you've got to log in with a separate username and password. And then you get to go to the analytics. This is actually what 90% of their customers actually cared about this page. Did you see how many steps that took? So I was in a meeting with the client and with our team, and we were talking about this problem. And for an hour, 
Um, myself and our developers were just trying to share with the client why we thought those steps would be concerning. And they weren't, they weren't too technical, so it wasn't their fault. They weren't quite getting the problems we were explaining. Between the hour-long meeting and I had a short window of 10 minutes to the next meeting, I made the sketch because I wanted to explain what the problem was. I showed the sketch to the client and I said, here's what's about to happen. If we create it the way that we're talking, you gotta go through all these steps to finally get to this page. She saw it, and she goes, oh, well that's stupid, of course we're not gonna do that. And she just took out two of the um, steps immediately. And this kind of a 10 minute sketch and a conversation probably saved us hours of story writing, development time, testing time, design time, and that's why something like this can be so important. And you can see here, this is not a beautiful artistic piece. This is ugly, quick, messy lines. I've not changed it afterward. This is what I use live. Um, last year, we built a house. No? Yeah. This year, it finished. It finished this year. It was, it was long. It was uh, quite a process. And uh, this is the neighborhood where all the houses were going up. And my wife um, had had our second child. She was at the time like two weeks old when we went in with the builder to meet. And we're tired, we haven't slept. And we're draining on all the things in the house, all the decisions we have to make in two days for everything. And one of the decisions we made was on the back porch, looking into the back porch across the mountains. I live in Idaho, I love mountains. I get to look out and see the sunset over my backyard. So we want two windows back there. And what we want are three foot by six foot. So that's this tall, this wide, and this tall. So that's what we said, and we thought that was pretty clear. When we went to um, actually see the house getting built, my wife and I walk in, and I'm less perceptive. I wasn't really worried, I was just looking around, and she immediately walks right up to the windows, and she starts getting very concerned because this is what she was expecting. She thought we were gonna get this beautiful view looking over the mountains. There's, there's the view. And that's what we got. What had happened is I had actually signed off on three foot six inches by three foot six inches. So I signed off on a, a decimal instead of a dash. And I like to use this example of had I just been able to see a quick sketch of what the back side of the house would have been instead of a floor plan. Had I just seen something, uh, we would have immediately known something was wrong and we would have called it out. And then the builder, they were very kind. They went and fixed it. They had to do all this stuff. Um, so this is a non-development example of why sketching can really help. Um, this, to me, is one of the most important lines in sketching. It's beautiful and it's perfect. It's just a squiggly line. And then this. Do you guys think that uh, that'd be that hard to make? No, it's just a couple of little shapes. So if you can do that, then you can do something like this. You can create a web page, you can create buttons, you can create arrows, you can create elements on a page. And in my sketching, these are the only required tools, a pen and a paper. So that's what you guys have today, because that's, that's all we need to use. Um, and if you can use those tools, maybe here's a couple little ways, you could shade a button, you could do stuff like that, but that's really all you need um, in terms of most sketching, just a couple of shapes. And then you could do something like this, you could say, um, a uh, client of mine, I have a home page, and I need a call to action to link off to an about page, and that's it. This is stuff that um, just conveys a ton of information because you and I could sit there and talk all day about what we want to build, but the moment we do this, we can get on the same page. Um, and there's actually a sketch on paper just to prove that I actually do use paper at times. So, um, I'm gonna work through this, uh, walk through this one a little bit faster, but. Um, last year, I was um, getting to work on some um, things in Gutenberg, some different projects, and uh, Matthias had brought up a block that needed to be created. And so this is, I'm gonna intentionally jump into something a little more than basic sketching just to show where you can take it. So I looked at the user story, I looked at, I took a screenshot of what he was asking for, and then I just went ahead and created a sketch. I said, I think this is what we're talking about. And you can go check the GitHub ticket, it's there now. I said, I, I think we wanna have this and this and this and then we got some feedback and I actually then took it to the design process, which you can see there, that's still not that complicated. I'm just looking at a few elements and I'm suggesting something. And then from there, you can actually see we took it um, all the way to a full clickable prototype. 
But once again, this was based on a very simple sketch. And you know, that, that, that's beautiful. I, I love stuff like this. Um, another example that I love is um, in WordPress today, there's, you have the ability to save drafts in uh, the customizer. And it kind of started back a year and a half ago with uh, several developers talking back and forth. And at one point, I got pulled in to try to talk about it, and then it went back and forth. This was the first sketch I was given. And uh, this one's a little more confusing than most. But uh, from there, I took it to this. And then I took it to this. And it got a little messy after that. And then it kept going. And it kept going. And finally, Let's see, it kept going. We thought we had something, but we decided to cancel that and start over. And it kept going. And finally, we just stopped all that and went back to a simple sketch, because we'd gotten so far into the process, it was taking hours to make any changes, so I just went back to this. Um, so for me, as a designer, and working with developers, and project managers, and clients, no matter what type of work I'm doing, I'm always coming back to those very simple sketches. And so I'm going to do now, if I can get the I, the test point worked earlier, we'll see. I switch to the iPad. I'm going to do an example of sketching live. And I'm, I'm doing it on the iPad for two reasons. One, you can see the screen. And two, I, I just I think it's cool. Um, all right, so here's an example that I'm going to sketch of. Th this could actually come up pretty quickly from a client. I've got. Um, a flow, and I've not done this yet, so I'm doing this live, I'm really just thinking out loud. I've got a flow that a client needs that I'm working with a publisher, this is a made-up example, who is using Microsoft Word. So that's, that's Word. And they're writing all of their articles in Word, and then they're pasting into WordPress, and they're pressing the little format button, and then they paste into there, and then they add their featured image, and they add their metadata, and then they submit it for review. So that's their current process. What I've just done there is, in a couple of seconds, started to identify what that could look like, and now we can talk about what their current process looks like. I can obviously go more detail. And then what I could say is, well, instead of doing that, what if we did this? What if WordPress could be our first source of authoring, and then you press submit for review, and then what if there was a way that the editor could redline it, which is actually a ticket being discussed today. What if, what if there was a comment system over like Google Docs, where you could comment and redline the text? And so, once again, this is something that needs a lot more discussion. We actually would need to figure out what this means. Could be a lot of discussion, but we can just quickly think out loud and play with what that looks like. I'll try plugging back into the iPad here, or into the Mac. I think we're good? Perfect. That worked. OK. So um, that's all out of the way. Now we get to go to the fun part. Um, what I'd like to do is have everybody uh, take pen and paper. And we're going to only spend, I think, three minutes. And I want you to tell me what the place you slept in last night looked like if you slept at all. So top down, isometric, whatever the view is, just show me what that looks like, and let's spend a couple minutes doing that.
So I'm gonna have Brian and Jonathan go through and grab a couple from you guys and uh, show them up here. Also, if you've never done sketching before by any chance, go ahead and raise your hand because I really want to see that. All right, so we have one right here who's never done sketching. I, I, I want to see that. Oh, right behind him. Perfect. Should I have them liked, or does it matter for the audio? Perfect. So Jonathan, if you want to, um, this gentleman two down, I want to, I think this is awesome. Okay, I'm going to take a picture, and let's plug into here. I think we'll get it. Yeah, all right, so tell me about your room last night. But, Basically, there are two chambers separated by a door yep. and uh, a bathroom and four beds. So were you here, here, or oh, there? there. The, right there? That's the bathroom. Oh, that was the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. That's the, that is bed. That was your bed? Yeah. Nice. So is this a huge room here? Yeah. Nice. Okay. That seems pretty cool. <laughs> Good place to sleep. Um, I, I like to call out that, you know, if you haven't been sketching before, like I totally get this. I know what you're talking about here. This is uh, you're conveying to me what happened, and we can talk, uh, have a story about it. All right, let's see what else we got. All right. I think I need to switch this. Rotate this. Perfect. Oh. So who was this? I want to hear about that. that. Those beds look pretty small, I think. Oh, whatever. We're going to see it sideways. Um, John, can you want to take the mic over to him? Oh, yes. So those full-size beds or twin beds, what are those? Uh, this is two bed. So two, two, two beds. Yep. Uh, closet uh, on the right, on the left, and the window on the right. I, I'm always curious to see what I'm going to get because um, one time I went to a conference and it was past midnight when I finally got into my room, and there's three other guys I've never met before all sleeping, and I had the choice to climb in bed with the guy on the single bed by himself. Or sleep on the windowsill. Uh, I chose the windowsill. I, I, I laid in there, and so that was that was the most unique one I had slept in. Let's see here. Okay, so who was this one? I'm gonna bring the mic over. Thank you. Uh, yeah, tell me about this room. Well, I try to. Why don't you tell me what you see <laughs> with this room? I'm really room. curious to know what colors that painting is. Oh, those are some rocks, white some, rocks. Some rocks, okay, cool. Um, I see some cool lampstands. Is this looking out across the patio? This yeah, yeah. Nice. And um, I, this room looks small, is it? Uh, not really, it's uh. kind of huge. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that it, it looks the same as my hotel room. So same as your hotel room? Five point square hotel or something yeah. else? No, okay. No. But it, it's similar. It's, and on the right there is a bathroom and I have the bed there and I have mm -hmm. the view on the right the same. Well, but this, kind is, of my, but this is my sketch. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Amsterdam and um, I, I think the beds in America tend to be bigger than Europe based on my experience the last couple of times and I, I was surprised the bed literally was about my size, and my feet got to hang over a little bit. Um, but that was okay, I still slept good, I was tired. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, got a couple more here. Uh, 
All right, who, who is this? Here, I'll pass this one right here. So how, how did you sleep last night? Uh, I slept well. Yep. That, that's my bedroom. Oh, I so slept. you live here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, well, that is good. Yeah. That's a um, uh, lot of curves. You see the, the it's a loft. Oh, know? yes. Yeah. Uh, and huge bed. Um, so, cool. Cool. The first night that I got here, it was 95 degrees that day. One of my coworkers told me it was gonna be in the 60s all week. So I packed my winter coat, I packed a sweater, I packed everything warm for the conference, or everything to keep warm, and it was 95 degrees. And the first night, I had no AC. So I actually, there was, my room was very stuffy, so I actually slept on the tiny little couch out in the living room, and then the next day, Actually, I have an amazing Airbnb host that came in and installed an AC the next day. So, I've been sleeping very good since then. I think we have one more here. We got a couple of views. Okay, this one's on the water. Who, who is this one? Perfect, right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it's actually a houseboat. Oh. Or Boatel, yes. it's called. And yeah, it's on the water. And there you see top down the room. It has three beds, one, uh, two, one big double bed and two smaller ones. And there is uh, two windows and yeah, the shower in, a, in the bathroom. So one of my friends has been trying to convince me that this is the way to go. H how is it? Do you like it? Yeah, the, the view is spectacular. It's really nice. Yeah. It has all this atmosphere, but it's totally stable. I don't know if it's a fake houseboat. It's on the water, but there's no it doesn't movement move at all. It doesn't move at all. Oh. I don't know what they did it with. I, I imagine that would be a good thing for most people to not yeah. have this way. But that's really cool. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm going to switch back to this. Um, I, I just like this exercise because it's a way to tell stories. It's a way to just show what, how things went, what we're, what we're doing, and uh, convey how your room might have been. I want to do this example of, and if, uh, if you need any more paper, just raise your hand and um, we'll help you out. But I want to do another example. Uh, let's sketch a product homepage. Um, if you have a product that you actually work on, or an imaginary product, or a product you like to be better, um, just sketch out what that homepage might look like. And here's some things that you can include in the homepage. Um, really, all you're trying to do, if you imagine that I'm your uh, developer that you're about to hire, or I'm your client you're trying to work for, what do you want to convey to me to make sure we get on the same page? So we'll spend a couple minutes doing that.
you're done and you would like to volunteer yourself. Perfect. Jonathan, Brian, you want to grab a couple? All right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to start off by saying what I think this is, and then maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. How does that sound? Oh, okay. My impressions of it. Perfect. So let's get that screenshot. All right. All right, so <clears throat> up on the top left, let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. We've got a big logo. Um, the, big, logo. the biggest one possible. Um, we want to make that as big as we can, that's great. We've got a uh, drop down nav, a couple of items up there, login, and then uh, some blog posts, a blurb about who we are, and then we've got what is intended, I guess, as the fold for um, what the, the screen would probably show, right? Yeah. Cool. And then about us section, um, probably a photo of, of who I am. Of the teams, probably. Of, of the teams, okay, perfect. So the teams in the footer, and then a phone number. Um, and with this, um, what, um, if, if this is your imaginary uh, company, what do you guys do? I didn't thought about it. It would just be a basic website for a yeah. team. I don't know what team. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is, if I'm going to be a developer for your site or we're going to talk about it, I can have a conversation with you because I know what you're thinking. I know at least what your basic idea is. Yep. Yeah, um, so for me, this is really helpful. I get a sense really quickly of, okay, he thinks the homepage will link off to these places. Uh, we think that we're gonna have to have this kind of information. And then from here, after just a few minutes, we can then maybe sketch out what the, another page would look like, how all the pages flow together. So thank you, that's cool. Oh, second one, thank you, that's perfect. All right, we've got uh, all right. It looks like uh, we're selling something. And who is this one here? Perfect. Um, right back there, Jonathan. Oh, perfect. Okay. So we're selling something. I see some social media on the top, um, a shopping cart, a couple of call to actions. So two of them, um, what, what would be the story behind having two? Just secondary and primary? Yeah, it's just more like, depending on any special offers or um, you know, view the category or um, find out some more. It doesn't have to be a product yep. hero area. It could be a video, it could be something about you know, see our story or something like that. It doesn't always have to be a product. Yeah, and then uh, your latest products, uh, uh, probably a carousel or some sort of a that. feed or featured products or something, yep. Yep, and then, um, that, that's kind of cool, just calling out a discount or some kind of a um, upsell right there on the home page. Yeah, just to like build the, the email list and uh, in case somebody's not going to buy straight away, they may want to opt in first and yeah. join the newsletter or whatever. Awesome. And then a video, uh, some testimonials. Yep. And they're all uh, three star, so <laughs> happy customers. That's good. They didn't, didn't have time to do five stars. No. <laughs> that was good. They're working quick. Um, and then below, just some, I guess, some additional widgets are probably. Yeah, it's like just like a regular footer with any, like, uh, you have your usual payment gateway logos, um, another feed, and maybe a map showing where they're located, some, some navigation links for all the, the boring pages, like the terms and conditions and awesome. all those bits. Um, so for you, do you feel that you're kind of been able to convey what you're thinking, at least at a high level, to talk to someone about it? Yeah, as, as a first draft, if someone explains that, that, that's how I would maybe put it down to paper and then that can be tweaked into version two, three, four, et cetera. Awesome, and obviously, and I, I think in the context of web development, because it's what I do, it, you can apply this to other areas, but the great thing about this is we've not brought in um, specialists yet. Um, they absolutely are needed. I am a part of a team of specialists, but right now we're just having a high level discussion about what's needed and we can just quickly figure out what we're thinking and what we're not thinking. And if you do this for more pages, you can start to pull things together a little bit faster. Um, well, let's see, I've got a couple more, I think. Oh, no, that's cool. Let's grab uh, two more. Awesome, thank you. All right, let's see. No, that, that's, that's perfect. All right, th that is cute, I like that. Yeah, 
It's just a widget. It's, it's a widget and a very happy person selling a widget. Yes. And then below we have features of the widget. And then I'm assuming if it's seasonal, you're kind of highlighting why it's seasonal or why it's great and a special offer. That's awesome. I love the little illustration on there. Um, any, if you were trying to convey to me what was important, anything that you would add or say, hey, we need to be thinking about this when we're making this website? Just make it simple, a single call to action, mm -hmm. and show images with a little bit of text. Yep. And what you've done there is the final product will probably change 100%, but in the beginning, you're telling me, hey, this is the basic direction I'm thinking of taking with this. That's awesome. All right, and we've got one more here. I think. Nope, we got two more. All right, we've got, uh, it looks like a, a real product or the, a potential to be a real product. Fire X9, the only fire extinguisher you'll ever need for your classroom. $399 or? I always sell something. But yep, yeah, that's the price. All right, so let's see the features. It's got a quick grip release, a safety valve, a seal of arrival. Approval. Approval and uh, quality construction. And something else. That is awesome. So calling out all those features. The best fit fire extinguisher I ever had. Amazing job to save me from a fiery death. <laughs> five stars, I would definitely give that one five stars. This, this is really cool. This feels like uh, some of those Amazon reviews I've seen. Um, uh, I, I'm blanking right now, but uh, it's like, yeah, it, it worked or it didn't work. Anyway, that, that is, I would probably be interested in buying this if it was cheap enough. A any, yeah, that's cool. Any thoughts on it? No. Hmm. It's just the first thing I've seen. Yeah, the first thing you thought of? Let's try this one. That is cool. All right, well, and then one more. All right, we've got here, um, I'm guessing this is a two-column homepage. Uh, yes. <laughs> what do we have here? What do we have here? Um, not a very creative, but very common product section mm -hmm. on a page, like not yet with a header or a uh, yes. but just the middle section. So, title of the product, like clear view of the price, um, clear view of like short review of like what people think of it, mm -hmm. the stars, and then maybe a short explanation, but if people want to read more, they can extend it. This is actually, I, I've come across this example a lot of times with clients where we have a product page and we're not quite sure the details of it. And I've um, I had a, a potential client come to me and, and he was just sharing how it was not converting at all. Um, and he had gotten feedback that uh, the photos weren't working, the thumbnails weren't usable, um, they couldn't select the proper options. And um, being able to show something like this and talk through something like this, it doesn't take any energy to throw it away and try another idea. Um, and that's, I, I love doing simple things like this to just quickly convey ideas. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, and there will be some, some upsells in the bottom, like the below the CTA that they can just go to uh, other related products, maybe, and a testimonial on the left. Yep, and then uh, I'm guessing those are thumbnails to potentially increase the size of the other photo above it. Yeah, or details, or show it from another like, side, or yeah, they can click on it. Uh, and what I get inspired by, by seeing all these examples, is um, designers are often used to doing this, and so they continue to try to express themselves a little bit um, better. I, I always try to walk the line between too much detail and too little, because if I go too little, the client doesn't want to see it. If I do go too much, they think, oh, um, he's already decided everything for me. So there's, it, it takes up practice. But what I love also is when non-designers give me things like this, they're not um, they don't think, oh, only the designer could touch that, only the designer could do this. This really is a simple thing that anybody can do. And I, I've had team members of mine, um, it clicked one day, they're like, oh, this isn't anything special, I can totally just do this. And I've, I've had some folks say, well, I did a sketch, but it's not that good, 
And then I see it and I'm like, no, this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We can now, I can get, figure out what's in your head. So let's switch over to the Mac. Thank you. And there we go. Oh, yeah. I want to do this one more example and then I want to take a little bit of time to, to, to ask some questions and kind of chat about what I like to do. Um, so let's spend a few more minutes. And this one, um, by the way, if you want to do another example, go for it. This is just my suggestion. Um, let's go through this flow. So a couple of web pages, a couple pages with arrows or however you want to express something like this flow for a service-based company. Um, the, if I come to the home page and then if I were to want to read more information about your service and then maybe look at some more pages, go sign up, and then maybe what that sign up looks like, what would you want from me and what might that look like? So let's take a few minutes to do that. Here. Sure. Sure. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, let's do maybe five or six. I see one over here. This one, 
we've got, and who do we have for this one? Perfect. With this one, we've got a service-based company, and we're going through the whole flow. Um, maybe talk into it briefly what you're thinking with this. Okay, so, so the uh, visitor uh, gets to the home page there. They, they read all, all about it. They click on find out more details. That takes them to the sales page with all the, the various copy the benefits and features of, of the service. They and, then, and that's number two? two. Yes, yeah, okay. I forgot to number the rest of them. Oh, no, um, you're good. They then go on to the, 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 the sign up form or, or whatever process it is to, to sign up for the service. Takes them to a thank you page, which then results in an email, which then triggers some sort of an onboarding sequence, whether mm -hmm. it's with uh, emails or on some CRM for the service provider to then follow up with the client, and depending on what kind of service it is, uh, the onboarding sequence can be tailored to, to online or offline service or software or whatever it is they're selling. Yeah, um, what's really cool about something like this is we could start to figure out all the pieces that might need to be involved in this website. Obviously there's more discussions, more sketches, but then at a holistic view you could say, here's all the things I might start to need. And then if you're doing development, you could break it out into different tasks. You could add descriptions to those. And very quickly, you can make sure no big pieces are missed. Because um, I've been in projects, uh, there was one recently where um, we had estimated out everything, we'd taken care of everything, but there was one um, important little piece about um, exporting and importing the database that had kind of been looked over a little bit. And that ended up requiring some special work from our team that we hadn't quite thought about ahead of time. And obviously you can't catch everything, but sometimes if you can lay all this out, you can figure things out ahead of time. All right, let's see. The next one is this one. And there we go. The idea would be uh, kind of like a service-based company that does accessibility reviews for websites. Mm -hmm. So you read something brief about why accessibility is important, yeah. some statistics that can, can be catchy. Then you expand, you go to, like you want to see more information, you get a sidebar with a number of arguments that give you more detailed information, show you, show you the services and stuff like that. And you get, on each page, you get a speak icon that allows you to activate a kind of browser reading like experience yeah. just to know how that page reads to someone that can actually read or see. And then you've got a sign up page, a sign up call to action. You go to the call to action again, you've got, you get another page that shows you how you can, allows you to select a number of fields like the number of pages that you want to review, what kind of review you want to get, what kind of accessibility you are checking, what kind of requirements that accessibility you might have, like what kind of institu institution or low oh, you nice. have to comply with. And again, you can speak that up. The real field that you have to fill is the email, to sign up and get a quote, or get in contact with someone for marketing. But you can speak that so that you can actually, while you're, you do the onboarding, you're also showing people how you can speak a page that contains information, but not just information, and then forms. And stuff so like that. on the forum page, um, if I know a little bit about uh, maybe any legal requirements or uh, my audience, I could say which ones I'm interested and not interested in. Yeah. Okay, and is this something that, that you guys do? Does this exist or? Uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> Just made it up. This, I'd like this service this to exist. This sounds cool. Uh, I um, would be interested in this. And part of it is um, even the educational aspect of it because maybe I haven't thought of the audio part of it. So having an icon there, like, oh, okay, it makes you realize what, what your web page might sound like red. That, that's really cool. Um, I also, you know, thinking of features, you know, you could go further to show other examples of what the web page feels like and looks like with other accessibility needs. Yeah, you could have a toggles like colorblind, stuff like that, to show yeah. to a person which is not colorblind how it looks to someone which is colorblind, stuff like that. Yep, I, I used to design with it really six, seven, eight point font because I thought it was cool. And then I started having, well, I've always had semi problems, but I started having eye strain, looking at the monitor, and now I really, I push for bigger font sizes in everything I make um, because it's just actually easier for me to see. Like that's just the reality. Before I didn't, I could see tiny things and now it's harder. So I'm now more aware and appreciative because I've, I've been cognizant of a very small need there. Awesome, thank you. 
Okay, we've got a service that um, I think my son would love to have. Monster Be Gone. It's in beta. We got we've had some testers. So who do we have for this one? Hi. Uh, yeah, it's still a prototype service clearly. Yes. Um, so yeah, you can you can call for help, for, or, or you could choose the option for no, thank you. I prefer to be eaten. <laughs> Um, obviously, you, you want to ask a bit of information about the size of the monster and, and what it eats, um, and then you can call for help. And at which point you are given that reassuring notice that, that Monster Be Gone will be with you in 30 minutes. But of course, you can cancel the service and click here to be eaten. And then I think finally we have um, the usual GDPR notice at the bottom. <laughs> I like the whole size, really. That is perfect. I love that. Um, and with your monster, um, how, how's your uh, user testing been going? They've all been eaten. They've, they've all been eaten. They've all been eaten. So that was in we, the we have no data. Perfect. That was cool. Thank you for sharing. And I see another. Let's see. This one here. All right. We got a home page. Awesome. No, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a classic homepage. Um, users coming to the, to the homepage want to know more about a company or something else. Uh, who are the guys I'm, I will working with? So going for more about us mm -hmm. to a detail page with um, a big image of two guys, or yeah, um, writing stuff about them. A lot of images, yeah. Everybody loves images, and they want to um, keep in touch with email or social media. And the poor clients um, press the button for the email, so they have to uh, accept the GDPR and all the stuff. Yes. And maybe we will ever write them a newsletter or something like this, if we are allowed to do this, yeah. It, it is interesting how um, six months ago, this uh, some companies have been doing it properly all along, but six months ago this whole cookies, GDPR sign-up thing was not a real big conversation. It, it's changed how, um, I've gotten emails, yes, it's another email from us. Yeah, I, I, I totally love this because you, you could see how much news ever, uh, you, you got in, in, in the whole year. Yeah. So just get rid of a, of a few of them. Yes, and really, it, to, to me, it's become a way of um, just recognizing how much is going on around me and maybe having a little bit more control over it, so I, I've appreciated it. And we've got one more here. All right, it is this one. Get that lined up. Full of an electrician's website. So you start on an ad and yeah. go ahead. So um, yeah, it's just basically um, service service um, website. So these guys, um, they do a lot of like Google ads and stuff like that. So most probably it would be an, an ad landing page where um, the potential customers arrives. I mean, they're not potential because they're looking for uh, like an emergency, uh, you know, electrician available. Mm -hmm. So he finds the information and then the calls. Then so he sees a phone number and then he calls right away. So he doesn't do much more on the website, but like, he gets the job done and he's happy. And then he goes back to the website. And the last box, uh, he leaves a review uh, on like uh, Google uh, reviews and local uh, directory uh, mm -hmm. websites to leave a review. So that information has to be on the website. I had um, recently when I built my house, um, it's a new house. It's out on the prairie, meaning um, creatures used to live there and I've displaced their lives. And I got a knock on the door from a guy who does passive control, et cetera. He handed me a flyer. Um, I actually appreciated it because I thought just in case, uh, but I was on, on a conference call, so I'm like, all right, thank you. And I took it and I lost the flyer. Um, we went on vacation. We come back and um, we're 
we've been gone a week, we're in our home eating uh, lunch, and you see a bunch of little mouse droppings off in a corner. And um, my wife is not afraid of much at all. She is actually not, not very many things bother her in life, but for some reason she does have a phobia of mice. And I could see in her eyes that it was very important that this be taken care of immediately. So I remember that flyer. I tried to find it, I couldn't find it. So then I Googled it and I saw um, three or four websites and I'm in a hurry, it's Friday, I'm trying to get things taken care of as quickly as possible. And I checked out three or four of them, horrible websites, the design was awful so that I'm like, well, I'm not interested because if they don't have a good website, I'm not, maybe they would do a good job. So I found one, the website was amazing. I called, he called back in two minutes and said he would be at my house anytime that day. And he showed up, he took care of us, he took care of our problem, we think, we'll see long term. Um, and one of the things that I clicked on was a Google ad. I saw that ad and I was desperate. I had to work very quickly and he ended up taking care of my problems. So now we are on his subscription service because I don't want to deal with mice anymore. I, I did plenty uh, growing up. So the reason I like to show all these examples is this really is just a way um, for us to be able to, to talk about the same thing. And it's not hard, it does, it's, it's conveying information and of course, when you need to actually get into the details, it's great to you know, do re user research, do design, make sure development is thought of. But before all of that, if you have more people just having these kind of conversations, just showing what they're thinking, you can solve a lot of problems. You can get a lot of things out of the way and, oh, I thought you were building this, but you actually want this and this and this? Perfect, let's talk about that. Um, so, I'm, I'm gonna switch back to the other one. Um, I'm going to jump to questions in a minute because I want to uh, chat for a bit, but um, something often gets asked uh, for myself, I do like to draw on a digital device with a pen because I, when I'm doing web development, web design, or when I'm sharing, talking to people, um, it's easier for me to keep it digital to be able to erase and move stuff around, cut and paste. So these are some of the things that I like to use. Um, I, the, any device within with any tablet or laptop or phone that allows for a stylus is perfect if you want to go digital. It does not matter which one because we're not talking art here, we're just talking sketchy. So anything out there is fine. Um, I personally, I like the iPad. I use that a lot. Um, I, I use the pen on the iPad. It's quick, it's responsive, and I can even hop into a Zoom conference call and I can share, I don't think I put it on here, but you can share your iPad live on the Zoom call and sketch and actually do mock-ups while your client or your other team member is watching. And they can even annotate over the top of it if they want to. Um, so that, uh, I work in a remote company, that gives me a lot of opportunity to get close to a whiteboard situation, which is the optimal. You and I being in a room together with whiteboard is the best way to do it. Second best, there's tools that allow you to do it. Um, I've also had a lot of times team members, they'll just do this, they'll draw on paper, and they'll hold this up to the webcam and just show me what they're thinking. And that's fine too. Um, so yeah, these are tools that I like to use. And if you're going beyond sketching, um, there's a lot of great things out there. Uh, Figma, um, Adobe XD, Envision. There's now Envision Studio. There's a lot of cool options available. Um, and then, this, this is my email, so you're welcome to email me. I, I'd love to know if there's any questions because often what comes up, people are curious about tools. They're curious about um, what, how sketching fits into their workflows, etc. So yeah, any questions? If not, that's okay too, but I'm curious. Yeah. So if I have the mic. Perfect. <laughs> um, so how do we uh, go about um, educating our clients to do this stuff with us, like sketch for us, for example, or you know, show a, a, a sketch on a paper on the webcam, or um, what are some like good, I know, pr practices? Um, uh, so far, what I've found is um, and clients I've had a relationship with over a couple of months. They see me doing sketches, and if they're not designers, at first they're intimidated. So I will intentionally um, make my sketches ugly and simple. If I were to come in with this beautiful rendering right off the bat, they would be so intimidated they would never sketch. But if I keep it really messy, and like what you guys have been doing today, we're not trying to make these perfect. So uh, 
this isn't the perfect answer, but if over time you are showing this and you're intentionally being quick and messy, um, even using your non-dominant hand, for example, um, that and uh, something the guys from base camp say is using a marker is a way to not get into the details, a big, thick marker. Um, then I've had a, a couple of clients that they finally came out and they showed me a sketch of theirs. They were very shy about it, they weren't sure. I'm like, this is perfect. Um, so it's kind of just that relationship. I encourage a little bit, uh, and even with some of my team members that do this, I'd love to see it. They show me the first one, I tell them it is great because it is, and then often they start doing it more. Um, it, it is a little bit of a process though. It's, a, it's an education of people think you have to be an artist to do this, and, and you don't. One, one yes. second question, yeah. if I may. Um, so, my sketching right now is really bad. Like, yeah. They look ugly, and probably if I would, if I were to show it to someone else, they would struggle, uh, you know, going through it by themselves mm -hmm. without having me to explain it. Um, and I would guess that your sketching skills weren't that great as they are right now um, mm -hmm. before. So, what's kind of a the process here uh, in order to get better at sketching and make them look nice. Yep, so two things. First of all, um, it's okay if they're really messy as long as you're in the room to explain it because you can talk me through a very messy sketch and what you're taught there. Um, if you expect me to see it like not at the same time, it does need to have um, some more, a little more clarity. So for me, what's helped a lot um, is designing um, a web, sketching or wireframing a web page after you do it a half dozen times, you start to recognize, okay, a testimonial is two slashes here, three clean lines, and a little a name underneath. And those elements, uh, UI elements, you start to just, they, they kind of drill into your brain. And also, I, I honestly, I'll look up sites all the time. If I, if I need to do a quote box, I'll go check on Dribble, or I'll just type in Google Images quote box. I'll look at that, and then I'll just sketch that really quickly. So um, a, a good friend of mine, Encourage me that actually there's a book to uh, steal like an artist um, Nothing is original um, w One of the best designers I ever worked with he would look at all kinds of websites and make a beautiful uh, Composite of all these other things he found so if you steal if I steal from you it's theft But if I steal from a bunch of people it's research So I would say over time it, it's doing it more than once doing it maybe a half dozen a dozen times you'll start to recognize think, the same pattern to do it again. And also, if you Google UI kits or UI elements, you'll start to just see a lot of these, if you're doing web pages, a lot of these elements someone else has already thought of and you can just copy it. Does that help? It, yeah. 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 Awesome. And then right, right behind you, we, we have another question. Lots of questions. I know where to find you. Um, I sometimes with cheaper proje uh, projects, like when there's a limited budget, yeah. I get my clients to do a sketch. And the problem I run into, I send them examples of like sort of wireframes, messy wireframes, like see, this is what you can think of, what yeah. it could look like. Uh, but they find it really hard to think of features they want or what it should do. They can't really come up with you know, we can think, of, oh, it needs a button because I want them to go this and there. They, they can't even think of these processes uh, often. And uh, I'm tr I wonder if you have like sort of questions you ask or if you have like a set of questions or ideas that you give them to get started. Uh, because I do that and they come back with, you know, blank page with the logo and they said, I couldn't think of anything. And are you... Um, you send them other examples, are these other examples of sketches or are other websites similar to theirs? No, they're like, I look up sort of wireframes or, you know, sketches of wireframes and I say, think this is what you could use to, to draw an image placeholder or this is what you could do if you want to show that it needs a te text box. So, so I, it's not that they are, are, they literally couldn't draw the text box, they're just going blank on what should be on their website? Yeah. Um, I... I, I've had examples where I've, I've tried doing stuff like that, and then you start to actually, if you get, if you, if you got a client to halfway do it, and then if you go start designing and developing the website, inevitably they're going to think of something else, as they should, that they missed the first time around. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So we work together quite a bit. Um, I've been, in, I've been in some of those conversations sometimes. And just a suggestion is to ask them 
what the job of the website is, like to have that type of a conversation and get them thinking like that. Like what's, for this given page, you, you ask the big picture question, but then for the given page, and if they don't know, that's an uh, example to, well, the call to action, like what action do you want them to take? And then that can be a good question to trigger like the elements that he's talking about. Okay, well, if we want them to take a given action, so it's that, what's the job of the website? And, and for many of them, that's, that's a really helpful conversation because that can lead to how will you know if it's doing its job? Well, if people call me or email me, oh, okay, well, how are they gonna do those things? And that can, that can be a good launch point to get into the elements. And one way that, and thank you, uh, one way that I will go about that when helping them is um, if you've heard of user stories, they, they can, you can go, it's actually a great way to do full user stories, but more, if I'm, if I'm the user coming to buy your product, I'm gonna do this and this and this and kind of walk through that journey. Um, I, I, I like that approach of trying to understand what the web page is trying to do, and then you, as someone who's done this a lot, can probably fill in a lot of the pieces based on what, how they answer. For instance, I, I've talked to clients that, you know, we saw that your product page earlier. I've done product pages before, and I know you'll probably need testimonial on it, you'll probably need this and this. If I know they're trying to sell, um, I was talking to someone a while back, um, he sold uh, wrap, gift wrap ba uh, bags online, and he, boxes and stuff, and he needed certain drop downs and stuff, and there's certain elements I know need to exist as long as he tells me what the page is trying to accomplish. Does it, is that kind of help? Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? Any other things you guys want to chat about? Yes. And we'll bring the mic over. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, you, you said you're also doing this with your colleagues. When, when you're doing uh, something like this, when you, you talk to a developer, yeah. something like this. Um, we got a um, case from, 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 a, from a project, like um, a lot of um, un unspoken information. Mm -hmm. I always say, it's, yeah, we have to bring uh, information out of your head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the client was not the fault of the client, was, was, the, was the fault of, of the conversation or the, uh, um, the talk between the, the, the designer and the developer. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you have um, some, some tricks or, or tips to doing uh, uh, the sketching for, for, for backend processes or, or processes at all? Is, don't, please think about this. Don't, don't forget about this. If you, if, if you forget about this little feature, you have to start from the scratch. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll take a stab at answering what I think, an answer, and then um, feel free to let me know. Um, I actually, uh, Ryan is one of our, our developers. We've worked together on projects exactly like this. And what we've done both ways is, um, I have an example in here, taking a little while to find, but we were doing something uh, called preset posts where um, the publisher needed posts to behave a certain way and to have certain features in WordPress. We had to add in a button, you had to have a flow, you had to have all this. And um, Ryan described to me, he's like, here's what we need. And I didn't, I couldn't quite technically grasp what he was talking about as a designer. So I took a, about maybe 30 minutes and I sketched out what I thought were all the steps that he needed. And then he was able to come in and, um, actually Ryan, do you remember that example? Do you mind speaking to that? I'm curious your perspective of how that sketching worked as the developer. And there's a mic there if you don't mind. Put you on the spot there. <laughs> It was really useful to have sketches before, and we were able to talk a little bit about it, but it helps in saving development time, seeing sketches, and we can get on the same page and make sure it you know, conforms to the WordPress and the design patterns. So it was a really big time saver, and we do that a lot of times when we work. And like what, what really worked for me, what helped me is, I wasn't sure if I was, Ryan knew what they needed to build, and I, I had to express that interface, and in this case, he actually went ahead and made the interface on his own, but I, if I were to express the interface, I was worried that I was gonna completely miss how a drop down is supposed to link off to another button, et cetera. So I sketched that out, and for him, um, half the time I'm wrong, and the developer actually will tell me, well, actually, you missed this, or et cetera, but in this case, he was like, actually, that's what I'm thinking. So we were both able to go forward in confidence knowing we were on the same page. D does that kind of help? 
Um, yeah, it's saying, it sounds like like a similar problem. Yeah, so of, often about um, when 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 you get the information from from the client, then you okay, yes, yeah, this will be uh, something like this, and and don't don't bring all the information to the developer. There's just a, a, a small um, type of content will still be needed at, at this page. And then there, there's often the same question, where can this content come from? Mm -hmm. Please let me know. And it's like, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, just this one. Do you want to answer that too? Because I know we work together on this kind of stuff. One of the things I just wanted to point out, you've done a lot of work with like entity relationships and like data structures, yeah. where that's where sketching is like delightfully helpful, right? Where someone can describe a back-end process, which is what you were alluding to, and that lends itself really well to, oh, so this relates to this and this and this and this. And the, the sketcher may not understand it, like architecturally how it's gonna work, but by doing that, that we found that to be incredibly, like I've been in a room where we're talking about these complex, you know, how, how is this thing gonna relate to this thing, et cetera, and Josh was sketching over there. And that leads to some big discoveries, like, oh, so you're thinking the entity does this and connects this way. And like, no, I was actually thinking this. And just by having someone who, and Josh does understand it, but yeah. like, you, you don't have to to be able to just hear what people are and, saying and sketch it. And it's actually like, sometimes I don't understand all of it. And me um, working with backend developers, uh, I will try to sketch what they're talking about. And they actually off, they have to slow down to explain it to me, which often helps them with their thought process of, oh, actually, let's try it this way. Um, so I've done multiple entity relationship diagrams. Hey, this is not, I couldn't find, I don't know, this is an example of um, a little website I was building that they had, um, they had to have multiple um, parent pages in the same website and, and multiple verticals in the same website. And the way the client described it is like, um, I need MCCCI, MCCI and USB and IoT to all be at the same level, but I also need these two to be under this one. And it, to me, it was a big jumbled mess, so I started sketching, I'm like, okay, is this what you're talking about? And we actually had to go back and forth a bunch of times. He, he probably had to change his mind about a half dozen times, and that was okay. I just kept doing more sketches and trying to figure it out. Um, and um, that process is messy. But I'd much rather us have a discussion for 20 minutes after me spending time on this than get into WordPress, get into development, get into design. Um, and sometimes, I, I shared a sketch earlier, um, I do get all the way into design and prototyping and it's just completely wrong. And I just need to be willing to take a step back, go back to simple sketching and try to figure out how to get back on the same page. Yes, yeah, so a question over here. So um, I had a question about how the sketching came to be. And what I mean is, is this a, is this a thing that you brought into the company or is this a company-wide policy about sketching? Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm curious, like I've been, I'm a freelancer and I did work with companies that have one or two approaches. The first is some designer in a cave comes to you with a mock-up. The mock-up yeah. is high fidelity, super detailed. Any clapback you do essentially costs 10 hours to modify anything. So, no. And the, the, uh, the other one is that someone comes to you with essentially a sketch on a napkin and they're never going to go above that. It's mm. just. So I'm curious if this is something that you brought to the table or that you found in the company as you got it. Um, yeah, I, I think I was the first one at the company to, to really do this because um, we're an engineering company. I come from a design background, and so I'm used to doing sketches and wireframes from, from web design. And I recognized um, when we're talking to clients and doing all this back-end development that there were times where I could see our development team and our project managers and our clients were not on the same page. So I just started to introduce this on any projects I was on. Hey, let me put this sketch in. So really, it, um, it's not a company-wide policy, but I've encouraged it and uh, it, it asked, um, encouraged other designers, other project managers. I've seen them over the last year start to do it more and more on different projects. So that's to the first part. Um, to the second, um, where, where it just always starts so simple, um, Always start napkin sketches, but there is a point where it helps to bring in a UI designer, or a UX designer, a uh, design researcher, or someone with that kind of background to actually start taking it a little bit further. But what I don't 
like, and I've been guilty of this in the past when I was more of a junior designer, the client would say what they'd want, and I'd come back with a pixel perfect mock-up because I was too afraid of getting feedback on a halfway done uh, design. And so I think that uh, probably is a maturity thing of designers just feeling more comfortable to allow your messy stuff to get in front of the client from day one and make it a collaborative process. Um, yeah, any follow-up questions on that? No, I, I'd like to see more sketching. I sketch a lot myself. I'm a developer back in development. Yeah. I try to explain complex con concepts using sketches, like crayons and yes. stuff like that. It does not always, wo always work, and I try to, there is no middle ground between super detailed mock-up and one sentences. Yes. That, that hurts a lot. Like You spend a lot of time trying to, to understand each other, and you could have gotten the same result in half an hour of catching. I, um, there was a project where we had 9,000 user stories in JIRA across the project for the client. So it was a year and a half, two year project. And what would happen is I wrote a lot of these, when I say a lot, maybe for maybe a couple hundred of these user stories. And we get into a meeting, it's been six months, user story number, and I started to memorize some of these. I actually had a couple dozen of them memorized because they come up so often. User story number BR-1661. And it would come up on the screen, and we'd all be talking about it in this big conference room, and we're talking about it, we'd all read over it for three, four minutes, and then I'd realize, oh, I wrote this. And it's just big blocks of text. And it takes the entire, if you have a conference room of 10 people, we're doing a backlog grooming session, it takes equivalent of maybe 60 minutes for the entire group to get caught up on what the user story is talking about that we already talked about a month ago, and then decide what to do with it. So I recognize with 9,000 tickets for the end of the project, I started to, tickets that we ended up putting a lot more attention to, I would include a sketch. I would just sketch up after the previous conversation what that user story was about. You still have all the acceptance criteria, you still have the user story, it's still a good story, but at the bottom there would be an attachment. And I started to find that after a couple of months, we would all come into the conference room, we'd pull up the user story, and then we'd scroll down like, oh, oh good, there's a sketch. And then we'd all, in 10 seconds, the entire room was like, oh yeah, that, I remember we talked about this ticket last month, and um, here's what we need to do about it now. Um, so the amount of time and just thinking drops down a lot. Anyone else? This has been really good. I, I, One or two more questions. Perfect. And then we'll wrap up. Yeah, I, we're, we're just about out of time. Wow. Um, so we can take two more questions, then we'll wrap up. And if not, that's OK, too. Yes? I just wanted to add real quick. Um, and the, I think it's really important to be keeping in mind, like from my perspective, and given the chance to collaborate with Joshua, the, the value proposition of being able to explain things, like just from a time savings perspective alone. I've seen that time and time again where it can be kind of easy to miss like how, how incredibly valuable it can be to, like, from an engineering perspective alone, to be able to describe some of these processes, to break down the flow, to have the disagreement early in the process and get it get on the same page, and then before you build it out. Because there's some, I'm sure you guys have experienced, there's so many times where it's like, no, that's actually not what I was thinking. I'm like, oh man, we've just invested all this time and energy into it. So it's just been incredibly valuable for me to observe this coming to the organization, into the client interactions, and seeing the effectiveness of you know, using this universal language to facilitate shared understanding. And I'm, more, I'm excited when I see a sketch and I show it to someone and it's wrong. Because that means there was misconceptions and you have a chance early on to fix them. Um, so uh, please email me. Uh, my email was up before, uh, and actually, if you don't mind searching it one last time, if you have questions, I love talking about this. I love helping people. Um, I, as was asked before, I do have a lot of experience in this, so it comes naturally for me to just hop in and do a sketch. But if you haven't done it before, just try it one time at somewhere with the project, see how it goes, and it, it's not, it can't go bad unless you're working with someone who's just very, whatever, wolves it. It, it usually goes very well. So thank you so much guys for coming. Uh, I've got cards up here if you want to get my contact information now. Thank you everyone.